Maths paper two is now coming up. Let's talk about what to do to get the top grades and do the best that you possibly can in this exam. If you're new here, please subscribe and make sure to leave a like. I got a nine in GC maths and an A star in A-level maths. Now, maths wasn't a subject that I was always naturally good at, okay? In year 10, I was getting fives, and obviously that's still a good grade, but it wasn't a nine. So I did have to work hard for maths, and I did have to make sure I understood how to improve. Now, let's just get straight into this then. I'm going to try and keep this video as concise and full of information as I can for you guys. So the first thing I want to talk about is just a quick bit of motivation for you. Now, for those of you that aren't doing A-level maths, this is literally the last two weeks of your learning maths. You're doing maths tests and stuff, okay? So that's 12 years of education has boiled down to these two weeks, okay? So give it everything you've got, right? This is the last time you will do maths, which is a huge subject, okay, across the world. So really, really just push for it. And also, no matter how bad paper one went for you, paper two and three are more important because that's 66 or two thirds, 66% two thirds of your grade, okay? So really push for this and you can still massively improve your grades. Now, there's a big reason why these papers also get slightly easier and that is predictions. The predictions before all of the papers, before paper one, weren't as accurate because you can't fully predict it. However, as you go on, you can predict significantly more accurately. Say in paper one, trigonometry didn't come up and then in paper two, trigonometry didn't come up. You can almost guarantee trigonometry is coming up in paper three, okay? Because the huge topics that are almost always tested, if they haven't come up yet, they are very likely to come up. So off the bat, I think for higher, we're gonna see some 3D trig in paper two or three. Uh, we're looking at, we're gonna see trigonometry in your papers. Sequences are, are a topic that could come up in foundation and higher as well if they haven't come up already. I don't know about AQA, but that's at Excel. A lot of people are saying that though. So keep your eye out for those predicted topics. I'm gonna to put something in the description as well that's really helped me for teaching students, which is basically like a big little document where you can see the predictions and do predicted papers and stuff. We'll come on to that again in a bit. But predictions are gonna make it easier. So if it were me, I would be focusing quite strongly on predictions. And what I'd also be doing is when you're going through a topic, revise it like it's gonna come up tomorrow, okay? That's really important because you've gotta basically, if you go in with that mentality, you're gonna learn a lot more effectively. So I was teaching students before Maths Paper One. I had a strong feeling that thirds would come up. I taught it to them the day before and it actually came up in the exam and they got six marks. So basically revise everything like it's gonna come up tomorrow and focus on those predictions. Don't rely on them, but make sure you're really good at the predictions, okay? Because they are, they do get more accurate. In terms of calculator advice, I'm gonna link a video that someone's done for calculators, which is really useful. Make sure you know your calculator inside now, make sure you reset it, all of that stuff, okay? And every bit of maths you're doing in practice, use a calculator, okay? Just have the calculator in front of you in your exam, just use the calculator, okay? I know some teachers think you should like use your brain and all that sort of stuff for certain questions. I would use a calculator even for cal some calculations and stuff like that. It's just quicker, you don't need to work out. I know some people who just don't like a calculator. My advice is use the calculator, but also remember there will be questions you, you can't use a calculator on, okay? There, still, there can still be non-calculated questions like algebraic fractions, for example, you can't necessarily use a calculator for that. So bear that in mind and make sure you've still got some of those non-calculated skills, like circle theorems could come up, that isn't necessarily a calculated question. So keep that in mind as well, but make sure you're good with your calculator, okay? Now, another comment as well, is it's really important you can work backwards from equations. So a lot of people can do, for example, a triangle, A over triangle is half base times height, or half AB sine C if you do higher as well. And remember, the harder questions aren't just gonna get you to find the area of a triangle. They're gonna get you to work backwards okay so make sure you can if you're given the area and you need to find like the height or the base of the triangle or something make sure you can work backwards from equations as well okay that's super super important in terms of papers if it were me i'd be doing two to three papers between now and my exam you might be watching this the night before in that case even just doing a bit of a paper is going to be worth it okay on maths papers for predict papers are brilliant because they mark it they have work throughs walkthroughs from YouTube videos. So I'd be doing like on mass papers, but still do some papers, keep focusing on what is wrong. And if it were me, I'd also do predicted papers, okay? Just because it's slightly more likely to come up as I've talked about already. But you can still go through papers, you can still mark them. Use your mind at timings, just stay on track with timings. It's usually fine for a maths exam, but don't get completely caught up 
in one question that you're getting wrong okay it's really important that you don't just too much focus on one question and you keep going through my advice in terms of mistakes which are very likely to catch students out is if you have a feeling that it's wrong just make sure you just check afterwards and think does this look about right okay don't overthink it but check it now let's be honest okay with mistakes everyone's like oh you need to go over and look at them again and again after you've like completed your exam go over and check for mistakes no one does that okay being completely honest everyone always said that to me and i just find it so hard to like flick back through a paper and find mistakes yeah so i just end up like flicking through it and just looking at it and that's not really going to help with mistakes so i think that advice with mistakes sure is is good advice but nobody actually does that really if you can do that and you can go back over and spot mistakes that's really good but my main advice for mistakes is just take it a little bit slower i would personally rather i just go a little bit slower and have a bit less time at the end to go back over than rushing through it and going over and not being as good at spotting mistakes so in terms of that just be very careful especially at the start students neglect the start because they think it's super easy and so they can whiz through it and work on the harder ones but the start you whatever grade you're going for you need the start questions so just go through that systematically okay not just spending like hours on the early questions but systematically clearly and get all of those marks at the start okay sweep the start and then worry about the end so that's my main advice in terms of mistakes and i do think that people and teachers often don't understand that it can be quite hard to kind of go over and actually actually like look through them by all means flick through your paper check out any, any mistakes if you can another thing as well if you're struggling on a question and it's just taking too long put a star in the corner move on come back to that or you might fold the page you might have different techniques for that. that's what i would do okay you just want to get through the paper first pretty much in my view and then you kind of go over and spend time on those questions because you need to pick up the marks of the stuff you can do you don't want to um, spend too much time on stuff you can't do and neglect things you can do okay i hope that video was helpful i know maths is going to go well we do have paper three as well so to summarize the predictions are important make sure you're good you're going through topics with them revise stuff like it's gonna come up in the exam because there's a high chance that it actually could and just because predictions for paper two aren't right they could come up in paper three like i said 3d trick is very likely to come up in one of those papers so everything you're doing predicted now if it doesn't come up again it's even more likely to come up in paper three so it's worth revising even if it doesn't come up paper is going to be useful make sure you're good with your calculator make sure you're good with your exam technique keep practicing for paper three as well so if this paper doesn't go out again you've got to double down in paper three do not leave it last minute i hope that's helpful also please sign up for my email list in the description as well and i'll see you in the next video